dear students i am ranga hosli today we are going to learn unit number 3 probability what is mean by probability probability is a possibility or a chance that is a chance of happening or not happening of an event for example the probability of india winning cricket match against pakistan second one the chance that india will put a man on the moon is a very small then terminology what is mean by terminology random experiment is an activity that leads to the occurrence of one and only one of several possible outcomes which is not likely to be known until its completion that is it is also called as a trial operation act or process which has three properties that means terminology has three properties first one all possible outcomes can be specified in advance second terminology can be repeated and outcome of terminology is not known in advance then we see events the results or outcomes of an experiment is called event that is first we have to do some experiment then this experiment gives us outcome and from this outcome we get event and there are some types of events that is simple event compound event equally likely event mutually exclusive event exhaustive event independent events and dependent events now we we'll see sample space what is mean by sample space the set of all possible distinct outcomes for a random experiment is called the sample space or even space and this sample space is denoted by capital s this one <coughs> sorry this sample space is denoted by capital letter s then for example the sample space in the trial of a tossing a coin here the picture of tossing of a coin when we toss a coin we get either head or tail this is either head or tail when second one example throwing a die then when we throw a die we get either on the dies we get either number 1 or second or third or fourth number or five or number 6 then the sample space we know the sample space is denoted by capital s then sample space of throwing a die is 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 this is the sample space of throwing a die okay now drawing a card from well shuffled well shuffled playing a card is that is we know that in a set of card there are 52 cards this one 52 cards that is a sample space for a card is s is equal to 1 2 3 4 up to 52 that is all cards of playing pack of cards are 52 Okay, now simple events are those events which cannot be decomposed further, and composite events are those events which can be decomposed further into elementary events. Okay, 
For example, when we tossing a coin is an experiment here the sample space we know that the sample space for tossing a coin that is s is equal to head and tail then for simple event we denote this event by e1 e1 is equal to there is only one head then this one is our e1 e1 is our simple event or when we toss a coin and we get tail then it is denoted by e2 which is equal to in curly bracket capital t this is our also simple event then for composite event this event is denoted by e3 and sample space is ht and this is denoted by e3 e3 is equal to ht then this is our composite event this two events are simple event and this one that is e3 is our composite event okay now hoeing of a die is an experiment here sample space is s is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 for this when the event that 5 comes up is a simple event that is here 5 is a our event that 5 comes up is a simple event this is our e1 e1 is equal to 5 then 4 comes up on a die this one okay this is also a simple event then the event that even number face comes up is an is a composite event which number are even numbers when we throw a die this one 2 4 6 2 4 are even numbers okay and this is represented by e3 and e3 is equal to we get set 2 4 6 6 and this is our composite event okay now equally likely events events are said to be equally likely if after taking into account all the conditions no event can be expected to occur in preference to any other event in the same experiment it means two or more than two events have equal chance to turn up in the trial that is for example in the trial of tossing an unbiased coin h and t are equally likely events then mutually exclusive events two events are said to be mutually exclusive if the occurrence of any one of them prevents the occurrence of any other event the same experiment for example if an unbiased coin is tossed then turning up head and tail are mutually exclusive and second one if a fair die is thrown then there are six mutually exclusive events because only one of them that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 will turn up in the trial then exhaustive events the total number of all possible outcomes of a random experiment constitutes an exhaustive set of events that is the events are said to be exhaustive if all possible cases are considered for example in the trial of tossing an unbiased coin the exhaustive event is e is equal to h comma t and when a die is thrown the exhaustive event is e is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 then we see mathematical or classical definition of probability if an experiment result in m plus n equally likely mutually exclusive exhaustive cases and m of them are favorable to the occurrence of event a and the remaining n are against the occurrence of event a 
then the probability of the occurrence of event A denoted by P of A and is defined as the ratio that is P of A is equal to M divided by M plus N that is M is our total number of favorable cases to the event A and M plus N represent total number of equally likely mutually exclusive and exhaustive cases in which the experiment can result that is P of A is equal to M divided by M plus N. Similarly, probability of not occurrence of event A which is denoted by P of A bar which is equal to N divided by M plus N and we get P of A that is P of A plus P of A bar which is equal to M divided by M plus N plus what is the value of P of A bar? P of A bar is equal to N divided by M plus N. The denominator are same therefore we get M plus N divided by M plus N. Cancel out the term M plus N from numerator and denominator we get answer 1 that is P of A plus P of A bar is equal to 1 and in the case of when M is equal to 0 that is P of A is equal to 0 divided by 0 plus N which is equal to 0 then we get P of A is equal to 0 divided by M plus N which is equal to 0 and if event A is certain that is sure then favorable cases to the event are equal to all possible cases that is M plus N then we get P of A is equal to M plus N divided by M plus N which is equal to 1 therefore next one sorry the favorable cases to any event A happening in the trial always lies between 0 to m plus n that is 0 less than or equal to m less than or equal to m plus n divide both these sides by m plus n that is we get 0 divided by m plus n is less than or equal to m divided by m plus n is less than or equal to m plus n divided by m plus n 0 divided by m plus n is 0 and we know that m divided by m plus n is p of a m plus n divided by m plus n is 1 therefore the value of probability always lies between 0 and 1 for both inclusive this is important that is the value of p of a is lies between 0 and 1 ok now we see the example on probability that is example number 1. Two unbiased coins are tossed at a time. Find the probability of turning up first two heads, second one head, third at least one head. Okay. Here. How many coins are tossed? Here, two unbiased coins are tossed at a time. Then we get this picture that is either two heads, this one either here, either two head or either two tails or either one head, one tail or either one tail or one head. Okay? That's, that is here we get S is equal to, first we write down in tossing, for the solution, in tossing two unbiased coins, two unbiased 
coins at a time coins at a time the sample space the sample space we know that the sample space is denoted by s capital s which is equal to in curly bracket here we get either head head or either head or tail tail or head or either both tails here the sample space s is equal to h h h t t h t t hence number of s number of s is equal to 1 2 3 4 therefore we get now n of s is equal to 4 then for first that is we have to find out the probability of turning a two heads and then sorry here we represent it by capital a let a let a be the event of turning up of turning up two heads two heads then a is equal to here okay in sample space which number which is represent two heads that is this one h h therefore here we get a is equal to h h okay therefore n of a is equal to what is the value of n of a n of a is equal to 1 here we have to find out probability so we write first formula for probability that is n of a divided by n of s which is equal to the value of n of a is 1 and the value of n of s is 4 so we get probability of getting turning up two heads is 1 by 4 okay now we find out second one that is let b be the event of turning up event of turning up one head one head okay here we get b is equal to here in sample space which represent one head <coughs> sorry this one h h uh, sorry h t t h there are one head okay so we write here h t t h therefore n of b n of b is equal to 1 2 hence p of b is equal to n of b divided by n of s then the value of n of b is 2 and the value of n of s is 4 here 2 ones are 2 and 2 twos are 4 therefore we get p of b is equal to 1 by 2 then here we have to find out probability of turning up at least to one head then here we represent it by capital c let capital c be the event be the event of turning up of turning up at least one head
at least one head. What is mean by at least one head? That is not less than one, but here we can take more than one. This is the meaning of at least one. Here at least one means there are we take two heads. Okay, here at least one means this one is also possible and this one is also possible. But here in T T there is no head, therefore we don't take this T T. So we take here. So here we get C is equal to H H H T T H. Okay, therefore. N of C is equal to 1, 2, 3. Therefore, N of C is equal to 3. Hence, P of C is equal to P of C is equal to N of C divided by N of S, which is equal to the value of N of C is 3 and the value of N of S is 6. 3 1s are 3, 3 2s are 6. Therefore, Sorry, the value of n of s is 4. Sorry, the value of n of s is 4. Therefore, probability of turning up the event of turning up at least one head is 3 by 4. Then we see the next example. Three fair coins are tossed at a time. Find the probability of getting first all heads, second at least one head, third at the most two heads. Okay. For the solution, here three fair coins are tossed at a time. Then we get either three heads, this one. 3 heads or either 3 tails, either 2 heads, sorry, 2 heads, 1 tail or either 2 tails, 1 head. So, first here we write sample space and for the sample space, First, I am writing if three fair coins are tossed, if three fair coins are tossed at a time, at a time, then sample space is then sample space is S is equal to either three heads or either two heads, one tail, first head, then tail, then head or either THH that is one tail, two heads or either H T T T H T T T H and last one is T T T. Therefore, here num N of S 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Therefore, we get here N of S is equal to 8. Then we have to first find out probability of getting all heads. First one, let capital A be the event that be the event that all heads will turn up all heads will turn up. That 
that is here we get a is equal to from this sample space which represent all heads this one h h h represent all heads so we write here a is equal to in curly bracket h h h therefore n of a what is the value of n of a the value of n of a is 1 hence p of a what is the formula for p of a p of a is equal to n of a divided by n of s the value of n of a is 1 and the value of n of s is 8 therefore we get p of a is equal to 1 by 8 that is probability of getting all heads is 1 by 8 second one let b be the event that at least one head that at least one head will turn up will turn up then here we get b is equal to here we have to find out probability of getting at least one head and this is we represented by capital b that is at least one head at least one head means not less than one so here we take more than one so here we take this one that is h h h h h t h t h t h h at least one means here we take h t t t h t t t h but in t t t there is no head so we do not take this t t t so we here we get b is equal to h h h h h t h t h t h h h t t t h t t t h therefore n of b is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 n of b is equal to 7 therefore p of b is equal to p of b is equal to n of b divided by n of s n of b is 7 and the value of n of s is 8 therefore here we get probability of getting at least one head is 7 by 8 then we calculate probability of getting at the most two heads this one is represented by capital C that is let C be the event be the event that at the most two heads at the most two heads will turn up two heads will turn up then we get c is equal to at the most two heads means there are not more than two heads not more than two heads so here h h h here more than two heads so we do not take h h h but in next h h t there are two heads so we can take it then h t h t h h h t t t h t t t h and t t t 
therefore we get the sample space for event c which represent most at the most two heads that is h h t h t h t h h h t t t h t t t h and t t t therefore n of c is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 n of c is equal to 7 hence p of c is equal to n of c divided by n of s which is equal to 7 upon the value of n of s is 8 therefore we get probability of getting at the most two heads is 7 by 8 okay i hope all of you understood probability terminology events their types of events and two examples on probability in next lecture we we'll see more examples on probability okay thank you